Welcome back to the channel everybody, Geo here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Mori King, the king of the insects. Third grader Shota Aikawa's pet beetle evolves from a larva to a pupa to a super hot human. The wacky adventures of the Aikawa family and the fabulous beetle who would be king now begins. You're gonna larva this new comedy manga. Okay, I swear that last bit was part of the official description. But regardless, welcome back to A Week in Geekdom. Today we're talking Mori King, the gag comedy that started uh, earlier in the year and I somehow missed. Mori King is written and drawn by Tomohiro Hasegawa and it stars the Aikawa family, specifically the children of the family, Shoto and Shoko. Shoto is this very optimistic, a uh, nerdy, wholesome, young middle schooler who only wants a friend and he finds this uh, beetle larva, I guess, and he takes it in and he's going to raise it and it's going to be a wonderful part of the Aikawa household and family. Meanwhile, you've got Shoko Aikawa, who to me is essentially the, the star, the comedic star of the series. Uh, she is the older sister. She's a first year high schooler and she is very uh, eccentric and very bombastic and expressive when it comes to the comedy and the jokes in this manga. The first chapter goes really quick. You get the setup right away as young Shota is taking care of the larva. Eventually it grows into a rhinoceros beetle, which is a pretty freaking huge beetle, but it turns out it turns into Mori King, an anthropomorphic version of a rhinoceros beetle, and you see it right there in a very uh, comedic uh, fashion when he evolves or he uh, grows into that form uh, with all the smoke and everything, and you just see a handsome, naked young man with the friggin' horn on top of his head and a crown and the beetle wings in his back. So this is a gag comedy. You have to suspend your disbelief with what you are reading in this. And the series mostly follows slice of life, comedy oriented stories, uh, chapters of the week, if you will, where yes, there is a long running thread, but it's mostly the hilarious interaction between the family members and the fact that now they've got this uh, family member who is uh, mistaken for a stalker pervy creep, but it turns out, no, he is the actual rhinoceros beetle and he loves his new family, specifically Shota. But the twist here is Mori King is destined to be the king of the insect world. He is uh, fighting for that crown. So at the start of the series, he wants to leave, but later, uh, you know, at the request of the Aikawa family, he realizes that he actually does care about them and wants to be there with them and protect Shota and all the rest, mom and pop and everybody else, including uh, the grandparents. So the series, the humor is very similar in tone to something like uh, Maguchan, uh, God of Destruction, which I reviewed on this channel, where it is very zany oriented and it reminded me of those uh, 90s Nickelodeon type shows where you would have these very extreme caricature moments and you just roll with it and enjoy how bizarre the humor is. And it's the same here with Mori King. Part of the humor comes from two facts. One, that it's not a typical animal uh, or an insect and two, that there are a lot of jokes regarding the nature of the insect kingdom and his, uh, you know, his biology and physiology and how he interacts with humanity as a whole is the subject of a lot of jokes within the story. I mentioned that he wants to be the king, he's been destined for it, but there are other insects that want that crown as well. So there is some conflict with some antagonists that later appear. You have a, I believe it was a monarch butterfly, I might be mistaken on that, a giant hornet wasp, uh, an, uh, another type of beetle, and you know, that kind of dynamic. You also see uh, praying mantis and fireflies and all sorts of creatures, even roaches. And to see the different interpretations of these uh, 
insects into human form is really cool because like I've mentioned in the past, when you're doing stories with anthropomorphic animals, part of the fun is that you're able to make jokes about the human condition, the, the way that we behave as a society. You can point it out with the animals or the anthropomorphic animals, I should say, interacting with humans. That makes it uh, that much funnier for us to look at ourselves and laugh and enjoy and have a fun time. Now, it can be a little bizarre for some, but the story has an emotional core, which is family. The fact that Modi King wants to fulfill his role as future king, but won't abandon his new family, his loved ones, especially with Shota, uh, it goes to show you the level of care that the author went through to point out uh, the importance of family. Also, to not judge others by their appearance. That is very important in this book because you see characters later on like Oka, the praying mantis, and she is, uh, you wouldn't suspect who she is, but obviously the characters at first, uh, specifically Shoko, mistook her for a regular human and then she was kind of freaked out when she found out that she was another bug. And actually Shoko is always freaked out. But part of the gag element in a manga are the reaction elements and Shoko just knocks it out of the park. I love her reactions to everything, no matter what it is, are priceless. I love that so much. I, I, I always get a kick out of that. The more chapters I got into it, the better the comedic timing was. And the first couple of chapters, they're, they're okay. They're nothing like too spectacular. But as you're reading, you know, chapter four, five, six, and onwards, you start to really grasp the family dynamic and how silly and outlandish the adventures that they get themselves into, like uh, a fun tournament in the beach or accidentally filming a live action movie and then being confused for movie stars. Uh, you get a challenge from the different evil bugs, if you will, and how those fights are resolved. And you get a visit from the Ayakawa uh, grandfather and grandmother and how they react to seeing Mori King lifting, uh, I don't know how heavy those dumbbells were, but they're pretty uh, heavy. And him walking across the ceiling or hugging a tree and just following uh, what nature dictates for those insects to do as part of the cycle of life, if you will, and their role in nature. I also like that if you are into uh, the insect world, there are a lot of cool Easter eggs and nods and references to real life biology that you're really going to appreciate. The art itself is nothing too fancy, but it works for what the story is trying to tell. It's a simple comedy and the characters look clean and nice and funny and uh, it's not too busy with stuff. It's the right amount of lightheartedness that uh, it just works well, I think, for what the story is trying to be. I do recommend it if you want a little odd, bizarre-ish humor and if you want something out of... Uh, and if you want something out of left field with a very bizarre situation like having an anthropomorphic insect, usually you have furry type creatures, but now you're having insects like a rhinoceros beetle or a stag beetle. So yeah, not much to add at 20 something chapters in, this was more of a mini review and sort of a first impressions. I'm a little bit late on it, but I did enjoy it. I am liking the series as of the 20 chapters that I've read. There are actual fighting elements that are starting to brew because the antagonist, uh, Stag Beetle, wants to control all of the uh, insect kingdom and eventually take down humans, so we might see that evolve further. Also, I hate to be a downer, but beetles don't have a long lifespan, so I'm very interested in seeing how long can this series last and what will happen when uh, the bugs die. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested if that is ever going to be a part of this manga, or if it just ends, I believe, after a year or two, plot-wise, in the story, we'll have to find out. Have you read Mori King? What are your thoughts on it? And if not, share with me 
What is your favorite odd comedic manga that you think I should check out? Leave those comments down below. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. I do content like this on a weekly basis where I go over manga, anime, and comics. So if you want more, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know when new videos pop up. Social media links and merch store stuff are all in the description below. Thank you, everybody. I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next video. Thank you.